Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing and uh, Terry Chapman Dharma should be ringing me in a minute and we're going to have a chat about boxing and things in general uh, it's just going just gonna to be off the cuff uh, So it's all good positive stuff. It's all good positive stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, no doubt Terry's going to want to uh, Terry's going to want to uh, have a good chat about what's been going on in the world of boxing at the moment so let's just see let's just see how he goes so let me just give him a bell now and we'll uh, we'll get this party started Terry Terry ring me on other line not whatsapp because it's always a bad uh, bad signal where I, where I am so if you bring me up normal line yeah, I'll just put speaker on alright so that's about it really uh, it's all good it's all good positive stuff uh, people might people might not like my Scott Quig video but what am I supposed to do dress that up they're already polishing a turd, aren't they? And that's all it is. Polished turds. So, if you want a polished turd, you're going to match them, don't you? Because what they're serving up now is utter... Utter tripe. I'm not going to be able to answer people's questions non-stop here. I like to be Johnny on the spot, but some of the questions I'm getting asked lately... Uh, as shockers from these casuals these people right, they're not normal people in fact as I've said before and I'm going to say it again these casuals they're not just casuals anymore they're not do you know what they are they are super casuals aren't they Rocky what are they what are they Rocky that's it, you know, don't you, mate? If you could talk, Rocky, you'd say the super casuals. They are super casuals. Do you know, like in Beverly Hills, when uh, Axel Foley, played by Eddie Murphy, says, You guys are not just cops, you are super cops. It's like Tommy Frank, isn't it? Tommy Frank is not just. Tommy Frank, he is Super Tommy Frank. Ray Doyle, Steffi Ball's uh, manager of his gym, is not just Ray Doyle, he is Super Ray Doyle. And that's just telling it as it is. Do you know what I mean? Anthony, Anthony Fowler is not just Anthony Fowler the machine. He is Anthony Fowler, the most hated machine in world boxing, in the sport of boxing. But it is what it isn't. You know, we're not going to sit here and talk nonsense about that last night because it was embarrassing from top to bottom. Um, I notice a lot of people give me a lot of stick about you if you're his opponent. People in the game... Well, don't worry, I'm not going to tell Peter. But, you can only knock out who's in front of you. Is that London's finest merchant banker? Yeah, is it, but... How are you doing? Cool boxing fan. <laughs> Hello, you, you had to get that in, didn't you, Terry? I had to, hey, how am I sounding? Am I sounding okay? I'm alright, mate, how are you? I'm alright, mate. Uh, you know, the usual... Life. Yeah, I know what you mean, mate. I know what exactly what you mean. 
Yeah. Uh, so what's been happening in the sport of boxing, Terry? Tell me. Mate, mate, can you get your phone and put it somewhere flat so I can hear the microphone rubbing against something? <laughs> Is that better? Perfect. Right, that's brilliant. Two seconds, hang on a minute. I'm just rolling a four-sheeter. Yeah, I, 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 need, I needed to be prepared. I've had a relapse on her now. So, but uh, what, what I've found, Terry, is this: if you put if you put it in a blender, it's easier to roll in, in Rizzlers, and it doesn't it doesn't the branches on the twigs or whatever it is they don't come through Rizzlers. So what you need to do, you need to put it in a blender, one of them magic bullets. So well, a Nutribullet? Yeah, Nutribullet, yeah, I've bought one of them, Anna. So... <laughs> what are you just having? <laughs> weed smoothies. Weed smoothies, yeah, that's what we're on today at, Ch at Ches Porky. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did you think to your show last night, Terry? Come on, give me the truth. Um, well, what, I, think, I think you used the best word for it. I think the exact word you used was... Baba. Baba. I mean, we we had Frotch Groves. Sorry, we had Frotch against. Uh, I want to turn this upside down. We had Frotch against Boote on a non pay per view seven years ago. So we've got Frotch Boote. We've now got Quig Carroll and then Harper Jonas. What's going on, Terry? So it's, it's all pointing to what you said two years ago uh, that Hearn's going to go with the zone, isn't he? As soon as he signed that deal, it, what was it, September 2018? September... No, it was, it was May 2018, it was May, it was May. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as he signed that deal, if I was Sky, I'd have just been like, just get rid of him now. Yeah. Because all he's going to do is keep these guys happy. But Sky were greedy, and what Sky thought was, Okay, he's going with the zone. That just means more content for us. Not realizing Hearn was playing. Was well, he? Hearn was just playing everyone in this one. Yeah. Because if it, and it's going to be now. This is, this is where it gets really fascinating, right? What do you do with Joshua? So Joshua's got to fight on Sky because, as we've said before, Porky, Joshua has a contract with Sky. Yeah. He'll stay with him, won't he? Yeah, well, that's what Alcotto did that, didn't he, Miguel Cotto? He did that after the Michael Jennings fight, didn't he? Yeah, he's just like, look, I'm a free agent. I'm not tying myself to anyone. I'm a big enough star now that you've just got to show me the money. And I think that's where Joshua's going to head to. He could end up on BT Sport, Joshua, for the right money against Tyson Fury. I think so. 
I think greed has got the better of Eddie Earn, and I think it'll be his downfall because greedy people, Dennis always says to me, right, always be honest and don't be greedy, he says, because greedy people, I see him coming a mile off. And obviously, I've been there five years, and I now, so it, I listened. But then, then always says to me, the greedy ones, we see them come in. They don't last in this game. Now, I know Eddie's had 10 years now, has he, at the top. But is he now going to be a victim of his own success when he wants all the cake? Oh, 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 oh. Let's take a step back. He hasn't had 10 years at the top because there's a lot of dross. Up until Proch Grove's won, there's a lot of dross on his yeah. record, right? You could say six years then, couldn't you? Yeah, I think about six. From when, from when he had Kelbrook trying to fight Alexander and then Kelbrook fought, fought Sean Porter. For me, that's the start of the Hearn era. Yeah. And so he's had, he's, had, he's had a good six year run. But if you look at what's happened globally, right? Bob has basically said, I'm going to park my tank on your territory. So now he's just hoovered up loads of British talent. Then he's going to do shows in the UK. And if you also look at you know, Al Heyman, Al's up to his product in the States, Al's offering his fighters more money, so they don't go to Hearn. So Hearn's still struggling. Hearn can't even do deals with De La Hoya, and they're part of the same broadcaster. Yeah, that's they're how, struggling, aren't they? That's how bad it is, yeah. Yeah, he's upset too many people, hasn't he? You know what, he talks about all of this, you shouldn't hate someone trying to hustle, but he's the biggest hater of them all, like the way he's disrespected. Chevy Finkel, the way he disrespects Al Heyman, the way he yeah. disrespects all these guys like Lou DiBella, all these guys who are serious in the sport and have been there yes. for long enough that they'll see him out. Yeah. Because look, how's Eddie now? Eddie's what, 40, 41? You can't keep running around doing that fucking used car salesman pattern when your beard's going great, your hair's going great. Do you know what I mean? You look yeah. embarrassing after a while. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Terry. I agree with you. I think that uh, he's upset too many people. And this this now, it, it puts uh, everybody in a state of panic. I mean, I mean I'm mean, hearing stories that people at Sky are saying, are we still going to be in a job next year? You know, people behind the scenes. I'm not just talking ex-boxers. I'm talking production staff and people like that who do the boxing. They're asking, are we going to be here? What Are, are they going to... I know somebody who works at Skyrite and he's saying to me, do I have an extension on my house and borrow money from a bank? Or, or am I going to be in a job this time next year? Because it's all revolving around her. And there's a few people worried at Sky, mate. So, they shouldn't be. And here's why. Sky is still the biggest platform in this country for sports, full stop. The ability to cross-promote across all these different outlets. The biggest fear for Sky will be if they lose the football. If Sky loses the football, anyone that works for Sky, pack your bags and go. Yeah. That, that's my advice. But until until then, nah. Like, Sky, Sky is just a bigger platform than the zone. And everyone assumes that because the zone is sitting on a billion that this is some kind of no cash cow, but let's, take, let's really look at what they've done. They thought they could break America and make enough money doing America. And a year and a half down the line, they realized actually we can't. So now they're just going to go global. Which, now what, I'm, if I'm wrong on this, because yeah, I know you're the numbers guy, Paul, yeah, I think they're sitting on around seven or eight hundred million dollars of debt. Right? That's what design is that on. And so when you sell that much debt, to then go and expand globally, you're looking at at least another 200 million of debt on top of that. So at what point do they need to start making a profit? Yeah, well, well, the, well this is how I think they're going to do it. And I've had a chat with, with, with Dan about this. They're offering, they're going to offer this deal if they come to the UK, where if you pay up front for a year, you know, like 100 quid or something, you get the full year now. That's going to be a, like a rescue package to get them to get them back on top. And you know, offering a mega deal to put Sky out of business. Hearn will get his cut out all that, and feathers will be ruffled, won't they? Alright, so, so let, let, let's work with your numbers on that. Right, let's just say a million people watch Joshua Box, and that's the biggest boxing audience you're going to get in this country, right? Yeah. Incredible numbers in in non-boxing markets. Never mind.
on boxing markets, they have to do insane numbers globally for this to work. Because the more money they make, the more money boxers will demand. Like, there's none of this thing where, you, where you'll be able to cap the prices like you can in, in MMA, like the UFC have set, set wages. You can't do that. So I'd be, I'd be worried if I was the zone because the numbers don't make sense. Just even paying off the debt, never mind the running cost. It's not going to be easy. Yeah, I agree with you, mate. I agree. I think that uh, it's very risky. And don't forget, you've got Barry Earn coming out saying we've been with Sky 30 years. No, you haven't. They've been with Sky since since the after Frank Bruno in the mid 90s or something, wasn't it? Yeah. You, 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 early 90s, wasn't it you, Bank or something? Uh, you know, probably back to the Herbie High days, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, mid 90s. So well, they've jumped across. Everyone's kind of all these promoters have jumped across between Sky and Terrestrial TV. Wherever the money is, promoters go where the money is. Yeah. So it's a bit rich talking about loyalty, isn't it? Yeah. If you want loyalty, get a dog. Yeah, it's, it's, it's made a fucking joke. But yeah, that that's the big to talking point, and I wonder how that's going to affect. Dennis, we Eurosport now because no matter what, Den gets a lot of stick because his stable's not mega strong, but he always seems to deliver TV, doesn't he? So Den's basically a very interesting dilemma now, isn't he? Like, you've got Eurosport, which is probably bigger outside the UK than it is in the UK. And BBC iPlayer, uh, with a view to going on BBC. So I didn't mention that because I didn't I didn't know if that were confirmed, but that's confirmed now. So Eurosport, and obviously, do you remember a couple of years ago when? Well, I think it's about four years ago, isn't it? When we were, I was sending emails off and we got the interview at the BBC, me and Dennis, and we yeah. and we're there. Do it. Den, Dennis is talking about some Terry Curran story uh, about how he how he sold a greyhound and and blah de blah with Terry Curran and bought a pickup and went into scrap metal. And I was trying to talk numbers, and and uh, I kept butting into Dennis's uh, greyhound story. So he give me this look. He gives you like a scowl. I've put it on a couple of me uh, videos as, as insert, but he's got this scowl picture. He give me this scowl face, and I thought, oh, I better back off here. Then his story went on for ages again. So I butted in again. I said, anyway, back to the numbers, guys. And he give me a kick on the table, a little tap. When we got outside, he, I goes, what did you kick me for? He goes, you you. He goes, you kept butting in on my story. I goes, then you were drowned in. He goes, that story always cracks him up. I says, Dennis, these people are Joshua fans. They're young executives. They're just driven by numbers now. They don't want to hear old stories about greyhounds, do they? And betting and this and that. But point I'm trying to make is, we've kept in touch with these people. And obviously, something's come of it, hasn't it now? Dennis eventually, four or five years down the line, We've got us foot in the door, haven't we? But it were a definite no in 2015, 2016. Now, we've got date, well, well, the, well we're putting boxing on BBC iPlayer, which is a big thing in it because it might, and if the numbers are good, it'll go on BBC. So he's then playing Eurosport and BBC off against each other now. No, not necessarily. They have different footprints. Do they? So for me, Eurosport is a non UK network. Like, what, right. what do we watch Eurosport for here, mate? Apart from the skiing, yeah, maybe not a bit more. Of triathlon. Do you know what I mean? So, so it's not really an issue here. And so, but what Dennis has to now do is go. What does my stable look like? Do I need a few French lads because Eurosport's massive in France? So, do I need a few French lads to to be part of it so I can do shows in France? Do I need a few German lads because that's a big market as well? So, Dennis got this dilemma now: How do you build a stable? that satisfies both Eurosport and the BBC. Mm. And you and I have talked about this before. Yeah. You've got to have entertainers. Like, I, I'm not bothered about whether a kid can throw the perfect jab or not. I'm just like, do I want to watch you fight? Do I care about your story? Do I care about your career? And you might just be a, a brawler. So what? But boxing's moved to that point now where skills are great at the top, top, top level. But outside of that, Mate, be entertaining, that's how you make your money. You know, the good thing is, though, with BBC, the last person to put a show on at the BBC were Den 
with Clinton Woods. That was the last ever fight on BBC 2004. So the relationship's what, still what there. Time? Pardon? Was that the time of fight? No, I don't think I, I don't think it were a world title to be honest. But I think it were. I just have a little look on my thing here. I should know straight away. That's the casual in me. Uh, it was a good fight. I know, I don't even know. Yeah, it was 2004 though, but I couldn't tell you Clinton's opponent. But I will find out now. Here we go, Clinton Woods. The last fight on the BBC was... Hey, no, I'm not sure. It, I think... it, was, it Well, he had three fights, didn't he, in 2004. Jason Delisle, Glenn Johnson, or Glenn Johnson. Let me just have a look. The first Glenn Johnson, the draw. Yeah, the, yeah, it was a draw. Were it a draw? Hillsborough Leisure Centre. Well, if it were, it were one of them three fights. That was I didn't know Dennis obviously then. That was the last boxing uh, on 2004. 2004 was it? So they were Porky. You might be seeing Glenn Johnson in this country in a couple of weeks' time. Why? I'm just hearing rumours he might be Isaac Chamberlain's trainer for his next fight. Never. Might be, yeah. Well, that's good, isn't it? That's good, that, because it, Isaac Chamberlain, I like him. Yeah, and and Glenn's the sort of streetwise boxer that you want you want to take advice from, because he... If you look at records, I know you like to talk about Carl Froch's record. Yeah. <laughs> yeah go on. If, you, if you measure a boxer by who they've been in the ring with... Oh, my God, look, Glenn Johnson... I mean, He's a Hall of Famer, just based on the people he shared a ring with. I bet yeah. he beat Roy Jones when Roy Jones was somebody. Well, he had 77 fights. and He beat Roy Jones, yeah. He'd been in with Boutte, Froch, Groves, Dawson twice, uh, Montel Griffin, Richard Hall, who were no mug at the time, Tarver. Two, three times it, twice Roy Jones, Woods, twi three times, Eric Hardin, Jesus Caesar Gonzalez when he was 31 and 1, Thomas Ulrich when he was 20 and 0, and he beat him in Germany. Uh, he beat Thomas Ulrich in Germany. You know, it, Branco, beat, he beat, uh, sorry, he lost to Branco, and Branco beat Robin Reed. Sid Van der Poel, Sven Ocke, he were robbed in that one. You know, the list is endless who he's been in with, isn't it? Bernard Hopkins, he lost it. He, 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 yeah, Bernard Hopkins were the first one to stop him. The only other one were Groves. Yeah, but he, he, he's a special fighter, special man. Like, a lot of boxing fans don't show that guy respect. He's the sort of guy that when you see him walking down the street, just honestly show him respect because yeah. you don't want to upset him. Yeah. Well, let me tell you this. Right? Glenn Johnson, uh, when he fought Froch, Tarver said that there were a few times Carl were letting, out, letting him have openings and he said Glenn Johnson will be licking his lips with that low left low left of Carl Frotchers. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> I, 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 I thought Johnson was robbed in that fight. Give on, man. <laughs> Afterwards, he even admitted he got beat, even though one Japanese guy had it a draw. Come on, the other two had it for Frotch. I had it as a draw. Yeah, well, you would draw, anyway, you would anyway. Johnson. You a, a draw or Johnson by a round? Nah, Guillaume, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can't help me, Sam, can you? Nah. Anyway, back to the nature at hand. <laughs> you like that one? <laughs> perfect is perfect, I'm gonna let him understand. <laughs> you like that little uh, Dr. J Snoop Doggy Dog uh, one liner? Nah, I did, man, I did. Good man. So that we've covered the Dazone situation and Sky and Dennis's Eurosport and BBC C, uh, fat deal that he's just uh, pulled off. What? Uh, which is obviously what opens going to attract new signings, isn't it? Because if you've got TV, it does no, 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 no. This is this is the point. You can't say you hope it attracts new signings, but you've got to go after people. Like remember, I told you, Porky, in a couple of weeks' time, yeah. we've got the. The European Olympic qualifiers, right? Yeah. One of you two guys should be there for that. I don't, I don't, can you do all the dates? Because it finishes on the 24th, and I know you got the show on the 27th. Where's that at? Paris? No, no, this one's in London. Yeah, go on, yeah. Yeah, so, so someone from Dennis's camp has to be there with a notebook, right? So you're just going, hmm, that guy looks good, that guy looks good, and then bang, you just go, right, 
Yeah. Where do you want to go? Well, I'll put it to him. I'll put it yeah, to him because at the moment my uh, signing average is uh, one and zero with Josh Whale. Sorry, four and zero, four and zero. But it's 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 one on board, isn't it? That's doing good. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's doing he's doing all right, but you know, yeah, he's not the future. You see what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. Respect to the Whale family, but he's the wrong side of thirty now. So what are you looking for now? A four or five boxers, male, female, doesn't matter. Yeah. Who can carry the Hobson name for the next five years? Well, yeah, we're open, so yeah, it's. Uh, you can't. Well, we're gonna look back to the same point. You can't say you're open. Like, you've got no, I'm open, aren't I? Yeah. Well, I can put it to Den Carna. So look, Den, let's yeah. go sign this person. Let's go sign that person. And I do, mate. I do every fa every time we have a chat. I say, Den, what about this person? I put it to him. Obviously, th there's a lot of things going behind the scene. You know how it works, don't you? Yeah. It's an horrible you game, in it, Den. Actually. Let's do that, but uh, it's all exciting. The main thing is you've got to have a platform, aren't you? Once you've got a platform or two platforms, you're you back in game, aren't you? Because I was a bit yeah, worried after at Barnsley show over day, mate, when they said no, we're not putting that on TV because there were no title fight and the French kid who Warrington had pulled, who Warrington beat, he pulled out. And TVs, to be fair, right? When you look back, I'm glad they did because. When you think about it, you can't put rubbish on TV. How can we have a pop at other people for putting crap on? Do they have a quality control? Because I know free sports do. You know, for yeah, what well, fights are going on? Yeah. Have Sky got one? Because that yesterday, I mean, come on. What was that yesterday? This is Sky we're talking about. It's supposed to be the main flagship. A boxing UK boxing is flying. We keep told it's in a good place, but is it? Fury don't fight in England no more. Joshua's only fighting Pulev, and they don't want and, and they're going there dragging the reels. They're only fighting him so they can say they're giving something back to fans. But the Saudis don't want the Pulev fight, do they? Or Vegas? Yeah, exactly. They don't want it. We've heard that first hand from people. Oh, we, oh, well, not who I know, all well, people around me know, in Vegas, they're like, they don't want to pay any fees for that. It's not an attractive fight. Poole left Joshua. Joshua's last performance, what is, was he gun shy? Well, we'll find out. We'll find out, won't we? But I think that Poole left him with a chance of winning that fight, me, do you? And I think Eddie Earn ain't got a safety net now, has he? You know, you know if Pulef wins, Bob Adams is going to go straight to feud and we all belts, isn't he? Yeah, because no, you can't have a rematch clause in a mandatory defence. There you go, unless you're Tyson Fury against Vladimir. But but they, that were negotiated into it, wasn't it? But I don't think that was a... So I don't think that was... They didn't do it on a mandatory basis, did they? Oh, they didn't they? They did it on a... They did it on a... We're going to do it for all the belts. And because of that, we're going to negotiate the split differently. It's why Fury got more money and then they put the rematch clause in. Yeah, yeah. Well, he never took the rematch at 6.7 million. Do you remember I told you that, that? I remember saying to you, mate, that rematch would never happen. Yeah, you did, yeah. You did. Yeah, I'll give you your jewels. You did. I was just like, it will never, ever, ever, ever happen. Yeah. And 